Hello everybody. In today's Unity tutorial, I'm going to go over how to keep a game object within bounds. So over here I have a scene, and if I press play, I can move around the scene, this little white dot character here. And just so we could see the motion, I have a little trail renderer rendering a little pink line behind him. And I could basically move around the scene, and I could move like, oh no! I fell off the edge. All right, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna have to make some boundaries in my game so that the player won't move off the terrain. So there's a whole bunch of ways to do that. I mean, you can make a wall and then make the wall transparent. So for example, over here, I could just do a thing where I create a wall, say a cube, and now I just would stretch it out to maybe um, 10 by, 10 and I kind of have a wall here and then I just place the wall and if you notice I have a wall there and if I try to move through the wall let's see what happens of course I can't move through the wall because the wall has a collider on it and now you'd say okay that's great but I just can't have a wall everywhere sometimes it has to be invisible so that's okay too I could just turn off the mesh renderer and now you could see there's just a green collider and in the game you won't see the wall at all and when I press play the collider's still there, so that stops me from moving through the wall. Okay, now if I wanted to, I could make four of these walls along each of the edges of the terrain, and I won't be able to fall off the terrain. All right, so that's one way. Let's see, if I just make this and duplicate it, Control D, and make, oops, I thought I made a copy. I did, didn't I? Um, D, oh, I know I'm not seeing them because I turned off the renderer. So let me turn the renderer on. I got two walls there. And then Control D. And, oops, I just copied both of those walls. And now let me just rotate them around on the Y by 90. Uh, yeah, that worked by 90. So the first one, I'll just put it over here. And, you know, I could take all this time to make four walls like this and trap my player inside. That's the wrong one. Okay. I can make four, four walls surrounding the player. And then, you know, I'll just like make sure that nobody could see them. So I'll turn off the renderers for them, but the colliders are still there. And I could do something like this where I press play and I keep my player within the boundaries by having some invisible walls. But as you can see, it took me a while to make the four walls, and it may have a problem when I'm making a curved area. So that's one way. But here is another way I'm going to try that's a little bit more complicated. All right, another way I'm going to try is I'm going to add a cube in here, or even better, I'll show you what a cylinder shape. A cylinder, okay. And then I'm going to take this cylinder, and I'm just going to increase its size. And mainly what I want to do is increase the X and the Y to something big that I could run around inside of. Okay, so 10 by like 10. And the cylinder, it has a collider on it, but if you look at it, the collider is basically the shape of a sphere. So let me make the height 10. And now let's see how this the collider looks like this. And the collider is going into the ground and it's kind of like a circle shape collider okay and my player is inside this shape and let's make it a little bit bigger even like 20 by 20 all right and let's see how that looks all right so that gives us a little bit more space to run around in and um so now there's a shape here i turned off the renderer and i have a collider so i'm inside the shape and i want to make it that I can't come outside of the shape. And also this turned back into a circle. Let me just make this really tall. There, 100, so that it's kind of like a round shape, okay? That's touching the ground. Um, and the reason it's round is because the object is round. All right, so now I have this shape. I'm inside of it, and if I press play, um, my object gets pushed out of the collider because my object has a collider and this has a collider. So how do I stop? The first thing I have to stop is from my object from being pushed out of it. 
And I don't think I had to make my thing that big. I think I'll leave it at 30. Okay. So I turn off for the collider. I make it a trigger collider instead of a coll um, using the collision with rigid body. And now when I press play, my object stays inside. Okay. And I can move around and stay inside, but it's not stopping me from coming out yet. But now that I have the cylinder, that I use the cylinder with a trigger instead of, you know, without the trigger, I'm going to go to my script for my capsule, which I haven't showed you yet. But here's my capsule script. I'm going to double click on the capsule and come into, boop, 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 boop. here's my move script for the capsule. And here it is. It's very simple right now. I just have um, a public variable for the move speed, which you saw in the inspector right there. And then two private variables that hold the horizontal and the vertical axis movement. And then these two lines here in the update function, they move me left and right and forward and backward with these two things here. So that's doing my movement right now. But um, now that I turned the surrounding cylinder, in this collider is here. There's three kinds of collision events. Well, there's like six even. So the first type that I had when I got pushed out, that was the on collision. Then there's another type since I, sorry, I keep flicking back and forth, but there's another type since the cylinder is now a trigger, there's on trigger collision events. So there's three of them. There's um, private void. And as I start typing, you could see the inspector show trigger. There's on trigger enter on trigger exit and on trigger stay. So these three events detect three different times um, types of collision with the object. So I'm going to put all three of them here and we're going to, I'm going to have something to show when each one happens on trigger enter on trigger exit and on trigger stay. All right. So if I'm inside the object, like I am right here, as long as I'm inside, on trigger stay will keep firing off. All right. Then as soon as I exit the object, on trigger exit will fire off. When I Just when I come out of the object, on trigger exit will fire off. And then when I come back into the object, on trigger enter. So let's just put a little bit of debug statements here so we could tell when these happen. Or even better than the bug. Should I use a yeah, cause the bug? You have to look down there. Even better than the bug, let's just put a little UI here that could show that the state that we're in. And we want to add UI text. And I could just stick the event system in the canvas. Here's the text right here. And I don't see it on the screen, even though I'm selecting it. Sometimes it's because it's too small. So let me just turn these on overflow center and then put this to the top of the screen over here and make the text bigger ah you see it's right here at the bottom so let me go back i got to press this and hold down the alt key see when i hold down the alt key it looks like this when i let go it looks like this so hold down the alt key and i press to put it at the top of the screen and now I notice that it doesn't have to be that big. So let me shrink down the font size. So right here's the font size 81. And I guess I can make it like that. And then to make it easier to see, I'll just make the color white. Okay, or yellow. That way you could just see the text. Or purple. Now I'll just make it white. So you can see the text, all right? Now this is called text. So let me just call it um, text debug. I'm going to name it text debug over here. All right. Now in my script, um, if I want to put a message on that UI object, uh, let's see, we need a pointer to the text object. So let me just put in a public text. Oops, it doesn't know what text is yet. So let me just add that in using unity engine dot UI. Okay, and this is for the text object. And now over here, I should be able to type text. And there you go, it knows what that is. And I'll just call this my text debug. It goes no. Okay. And save that. 
So now I have a text debug here in my script for my character. And if I go to my character, the capsule, let's name this um, player so we could tell. If I go to my player here, it wants to know what the text object is. There we go. We're going to just drag and drop it. So now my move script for my player knows what that text object is. Do, do, do. This is also, I can see the values here. So now in this part here, I will say text debug dot text equals enter when I enter the collider. And over here, when I exit the collider, I'll say text debug dot text equals exit when I exit the collider. And over here, I will say text debug dot text equals stay when I'm inside that cylinder collider shape. I know this is way more complicated, but <laughs> I'm just trying to show two different ways. So now in the second way, I have those um, triggers there and to change the text message. So as I start to play, you can see that I'm within the collider. And let me just highlight the cylinder so we can see where the collider is, okay? And if I start to move around, and if I move past the collider, then I should get the exit command. So right here, Right here, when I came out, it was exit. And if I come back in, I get the stay. Exit and stay. So right now, we're not getting to see the enter because enter happens in a moment and then stay pops right over it. So let's just take out this event for when I'm inside. And I just want to tell when I'm entering and exiting. So now I'll press play again. And I'm inside, so we know that the stay event fired. But now I'm going to come to the edge, and I'm going to have exit the collider and enter. And that happens all around the whole collider, everywhere it is, like around the whole circle there. Enter and exit. Okay? So now what I could do, now that I know when I'm entering and exiting this shape, I could do something to control pushing me back in. All right, so basically, if I come out of the shape, I'm going to do the opposite of the move that moved me out, and I'm going to push myself back in. So here's the exit, and when I exit, what I'll do instead of moving outward is I'll just copy this here, and I'll just go in the opposite direction, minus, minus. And let's see what happens if I leave it like this with the move speed and the time delta time. Because time, you know, let's see what happens with that. I'm going to press play. And I'm going to move. Right now I'm in the shape. And I came out of the shape, but it didn't stop me. Even though that command was there, it didn't stop me. I just kept going. So let's see. Let's change these commands here that move us. Let's try taking off the move speed and the time delta time so that when this command hits in an instant, it pushes me back by one um, unit in the space of the game. Okay. And let me press play again. Did I press save on the script? I guess we'll find out. So now I move and here I come to the edge and there you go. It, it pushes me back in. So it's kind of jerky, but this is a method that if I come to the edge, it's not letting me come out of the shape of the collider. It pushes me back in. So this could be a second way that I could do um, the collision detection. And right now, the collision detection is with this circular sphere shape, you know, so the part where his ground is circular, but I could do it with any shape I want. So let me take out the cylinder and let's try another shape. So I could add another game object, 3D object. Um, let's say I just use the, the cube, okay? And right now the cube is pretty small, so let me just increase the size. 20? Nah, that's too big. Um, 15. And 15. And I guess this could also be if my player could fly in the air, I could keep him from flying too high also because it's anywhere he comes out of the cube. 15, 15, and 15. 
All right, and I know, I know some of it's under the ground, some of it's above the ground. And let's let ourselves see the cube. Instead of turning off the renderer, um, I'm going to make a transparent material. Material, and I'll just call it tran. And over here, this material right now, the color is white. But over here with the alpha value, I could reduce the alpha value and set that as the alpha value and now instead of opaque which is something that you cannot see through i could set it to transparent and you could see how you could see through it a little bit so now you could tell the more i lower the alpha the less you could see the actual object there so i'm going to lower it really low and i'm also tinge it to green a little bit and say okay so now i just have to give the cube let the renderer happen and now I just have to give the cube that transparent material see so now we could see through it a little bit so we could see where the boundaries are at the same time in both screens and now I'll press play and I am stuck outside of it <laughs> all right so let me press play I guess my character is not inside the cube or he got pushed out of the cube and why did that happen folks why would it happen it happens because we have to say, we have to turn this into a trigger instead of a regular collision. So now with the trigger thing, I should stay inside the cube. There we go. So now I can move. It's not stopping my, my rigid body, but when I hit the edges, it, it still stops me. I'm staying within the square. I can't come out of the square. Okay. So what else can I tell you is that I have this thing as a trigger and I could have many objects in my scene. I may have some objects that I want to move through some, I may have one object that's going to be the bounds and I may have other objects in my scene. So let me just put, I don't know, some other shapes in here, um, like a sphere and I could just make it a little bit bigger. And this one could have the regular, um, collision detection and it's there it's just sitting there and then here this is a special object that's a boundary and I want to make sure that the boundary does this behavior but not anything else so what I could do is I could take the object I'm treating as a bound and let me just name it so I could remember which one it is and then over here for the tag I could give it a special tag so I could say add tag and I'll call it bound Okay, now I go back to my object and then I could pick that as a tag, bound. Okay, now when I go into my script over here that I, I have some object that I'm going to do this boundary stuff with, I could do it with just a bound object, you know, so I could say if other dot compare tag to bound equals true then do this code that's going to like push it back in okay boom and press save all right so now if i press play it's only it's going to happen with this boundary object that it's doing this and if i have other objects that have a trigger it's not going to do it with them it'll just do it with this boundary object because i marked it as a tag so this could be a way that, you know, I, I do boundaries and um, I guess it's up to you to decide which one's easier. If this one is easier or the one where I just put some colliders along the sides. But um, there's that's two ways and let's, you know, pick the one you like better. There you go.